Welcome to Quantum Mechanics, a powerful framework for understanding the universe. Hi everybody, welcome back for some more Dirac notation. Today we're going to talk about Dirac notation for operators. So operators in Dirac notation. So remember what an operator is. An operator acts on a vector in a complex vector space equipped with an inner product. I can say that over and over for us. It acts on a vector and gives you another vector. So we saw in the last lecture that the vectors are represented as, are descri described as kets, and we have a funny new notation for them. We talked about taking their inner product with other vectors, which were bras, but now we're going to use the bras and kets in a different way to make operators. Okay, so let's uh, consider our complex vector space in general, V, and let's take three kets, ket U, ket V, ket W. Now let's make this object, which is, on the left is ket U, and on the right, immediately to the right, is bra V, and their angle brackets touch. So why is that an operator? Well, let's see what it does to kets. Okay, let's let B act on ket W, and we put ket W to the side, and look what we have. We have ket U, and the, the bracket of bra v with ket w. Now bra v with ket w is just a complex number, so we can move it to the other side, and we see exactly what now that operator transformed a ket into a different ket. Now we can look at, look at this in much more generality. Okay, let's let v equal c n. It's going to be our favorite. Uh, complex inner product vector space and the usual notation for an orthonormal basis e, e1 through en. Let's make an operator which will be ket e2 with bra e1 in this way. Okay, now let's look at how b acts on basis vectors because remember we determine how, the, how an operator we, an operator is determined by how it acts on basis vectors. Okay, ket, or b acting on ket e1. We write down b, letting it act on e1. Orthonormal basis, the bracket of e1 with e1 is just 1, and so we're left with ket e2. Now letting b act on any other vector is just going to give us 0. Okay. So that's an interesting type of operator. It looks trivial, but I just wanted to illustrate to you how you can make an operator from bras and kets, because that's going to be a wonderful thing that we're going to do later on. Okay, we're still in CN. Remember this expression? Well, actually, you don't quite. This is the new terminology, but we define an operator A in terms of the bra ket combinations of the of the basis vectors in this way and this is this is a very important expression here because this is a, this is how we're going to define uh, operators using the bra ket formalism and the uh, the matrix elements of this operator are just aij okay how can you verify that you can do the calculation. We've seen this in different already in several different examples, but how do I know that this operator is giving me what I want? Uh, that's a little bit, little bit of a vague statement, but just watch. We know how an operator, an operator is defined by how it acts on basis elements. Okay, so we take A, which is defined above in 148, and we let it act on the basis elements. Let it act on EK. 
and this is what we get here. Now this is a generalization of the simple example we just looked at. Okay, the bracket of EJ with EK is delta JK. Remember it's zero, it's an orthonormal basis unless J equals K. And lo and behold, this is what we get. So, relating 149 to 148 and thinking about what that means, we've done something that's really quite slick in relating the um, operator, defined it completely in terms of the Brockett formalism of the basis and the uh, matrix elements of the operator that we also get from the same basis. Okay, let's go back to a simple example again. This example is, is very important. It's another example in C2. Okay. So, we have the, vec the, the basis on C2 of KD1, KD2, and we want to define an operator A. And that operator A is defined by how it acts on basis elements. All right, so we can also write down its matrix representation. We've done this in other examples, but the matrix representation for A in this basis is AC, the left for the first column, and BD. Now, get the, get the order correct in your own mind when you're looking at this. But now some, we, can re, we can also represent this operator. This is just a longhand notation for the sum in the very general case that I mentioned above. We can also represent this operator in terms of bracket elements of the basis elements in this way. How do I know that's the base that's that's the correct representation of the operator using this formalism? Let it act on basis elements and see what you get. Okay, this is a good good to calculation to do because we let this act on E1 and you end up with AE1 plus C E2 using orthogonality ortho or orthonormality to be more precise. Okay, now let A act on E2. Sorry, A E2, let that act on the basis elements. Sorry, I'm getting a little bit ahead of myself here. Similarly, if you let A act on E2, I'm skipping the calculation, you're going to get B E1 plus D E2. I want you to fill in the details that gives you 153. Okay. So that's a very important calculation. We've learned how to represent operators. There was a lot in those pages, of uh, just a couple of pages. There was a lot in them about how you represent an operator in terms of bras and kets, the combination of bras and kets. It's a very cl clean representation, and we're going to see how to, you could do that in a number of applications. Okay, so that's it for this lecture. I think I'll stop there. The next topic is going to be adjoints, a particular type of operator in Dirac notation. And that's where the Dirac notation really comes into its own. It's really made for adjoints and adjoint operators. So, that's what we're going to end with today. I hope you've all enjoyed this lecture and go through the calculations I mentioned, fill in the details, and um, come back next time ready to go to the next subject of adjoints in Dirac notation. Bye, everybody.